Welcome to the Business English Podcast, the best place for non-native professionals to learn how to communicate clearly and confidently. My name is Tanya Suarez, and in each episode, you're going to learn specific skills to develop your corporate communication, American pronunciation, and career strategy in order to build the life you deserve. Let's jump right in to part one. For this native speaker listening challenge, you're going to listen to my sister, who's a real estate agent, talk about the process of buying a house. Now, in this case, I totally caught her off guard so she didn't have time to prepare, which was great for you. (laughs) So instead of listening to the pronunciation, because she does speak very slowly and clearly in this case, what I really want you to appreciate and focus on is the intonation. I want you to notice that she doesn't pause and say, um, uh, she doesn't really do that a lot, but the way she uses intonation, the way she made some words longer to give her more time to think, made her message sound a lot more professional and confident. So these are tips that you can use for presentations or really anytime you feel on the spot. When you are a buyer, you first put the offering, you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price and all the other terms. Then you do inspections. After inspections come back and you negotiate any deficiencies, you will order the appraisal if it is in fact a loan that you're acquiring the property with. And then after the appraisal comes back, if it comes back properly, you purchase the home. When you are a buyer, you first put the offering, you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price and all the other terms. Then you do inspections. After inspections come back and you negotiate any deficiencies, you will order the appraisal if it is in fact a loan that you're acquiring the property with. And then after the appraisal comes back, if it comes back properly, you purchase the home. When you are a buyer, you first put the offering. Okay, for intonation, notice how she really punches the word buyer because you can be a buyer or a seller when you are a buyer. So that captures my attention and it's a really great way to break up the sentence. Now for pronunciation, when you are a, are a, are a, so the consonant of vowel linking and then put the offer in, offer in, offer in, rin, rin. Okay, good. When you are a buyer, you first put the offering, you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price and all the other terms. Now for this, there is a lot of information in one statement. So notice how she breaks it down into three chunks. You negotiate, you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price. Now these are a lot of words that are said in one breath, but it all flows together nicely and all the other terms. So one statement, but three chunks, which allows the listener to really digest the information. And notice that she doesn't say it faster, it's just really fluid, the middle part. Until you get a, get a, mutualia, mutualia, we have the Y intrusion, because it's a vowel to vowel, mutually agreed upon, agreed a, the, the, agreed upon price. So you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price. So there, that's something that you can do. Remember, I don't want you to speak faster. That really leads to confusion and her goal is clarity. However, noticing intonation patterns and you applying it to your own speech will really help you speak more fluidly, which honestly is what people usually respond to when they hear faster. Offering you negotiate until you get a mutually agreed upon price and all the other terms. Then you do inspections. Now this one, it's a short sentence, but the way she says it doesn't feel rushed. And when you're giving someone information, especially in this case, you're describing a process, everything counts. So the main thing here is just notice how you don't have to rush, okay? Even something small. Then you do inspections. Now, grammatically, if I were reading this, I would say, then you do inspections. But that's a difference between reading English, reading out loud, and natural English. There is more flexibility, and you use intonation changes to benefit your purpose. Then you do inspections. After inspections come back and you negotiate any deficiencies, you will order the appraisal if it is in fact a 
loan that you're acquiring the property with. Now this is another great example of having a lot to say. Grammatically, if we look at it, it's a very complex sentence, but intonation helps break it up so that it's easy to digest. Also the way she elongates words. I love it here. A lot of people get have the tendency to say um or uh. You might do this in your native language. So if that's something that you do in your native language, it will be extra effort, but totally doable to kind of take that out of your English. Okay, so after inspections come back, after inspections come back, and you, so here we drop the D, and you negotiate any deficiencies, so there's another chunk. You will order the appraisal. If it is in fact, uh, I think she pauses on uh, so notice the way that she says a uh, loan that you're acquiring the property with. So in that last section where she's gathering her thoughts and trying to articulate it in the clearest way possible, again, isn't it cool? Like literally no fillers which fillers are okay every now and then, but especially in a professional setting, they can come across as a lack of confidence or maybe not knowing the material. So really pay attention to specifically the last chunk, if it is in fact a loan that you're acquiring the property with and how she says it. Okay, so this, I want you to give, I want you to feel like this gives you the, the permission, the confidence to take your time when you're thinking. Because I find that a lot of times with another language, you want to get the information out there to show that you know the English, but sometimes you do that at the risk of maybe not saying the content properly. Content, communication is much more valuable than getting the English out. So this helps you kind of take your time in a different way. So after inspections come back and you negotiate any deficiencies, you will order the appraisal if it is in fact a loan that you're acquiring the property with and then after the appraisal comes back if it comes back properly you purchase the home for those of you who struggle on ending stories or ending conversations or when you finish you notice that people look like they're waiting for more intonation is why so this last section is super valuable because listen to her intonation how it gives you the clue that she's finished she doesn't have to say in conclusion, this is what it, this means or this is how it ends. The intonation does it for you. When you're writing an email, when you're writing a report or an essay, you, you know, you have that kind of conclusion verbiage that you can use. In real life, that's way too formal. Intonation will get the job done and it'll, it'll get it done naturally. So really listen to the rhythm here. And then after the appraisal comes back, if it comes back properly, you purchase the home. Congratulations on finishing this native speaker listening challenge. Let me know in the comments what other topics you're interested in and I'll do what I can to include it in the course. A great way to get more English speaking practice is to start your own podcast. Spotify for Podcasters makes it so easy to record, edit, and distribute your podcast right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like or how much experience you have or don't have, you can start creating today. Not only is it simple, it's totally free. I decided to start my podcast with Spotify and it's helped me reach hundreds of thousands of people. So download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. For more business English resources like articles, videos, courses, and one-to-one -one coaching with me, head over to tanyasuarez.com.